Welcome, guys. I know this has been a little nutty, a little crazy, and I can't guarantee that the technology is going to work. Um, but my goal for today is to kind of lay out how the rest of the course is going to look for the rest of the semester, show you a few things, go through a little bit of the slides that we need to get through, um, and just figure it out a little bit. Um, so with WebEx, I will be doing the normal lecture times here because we won't be doing any group questions or um, three minutes of writing or any of the usual stuff. The lectures won't go for the full 50 minutes, so they'll be shorter than that. And I will record them. It takes WebEx a little bit, um, a, a long time to get the the video that's recorded um, to a spot where you can download it. So it might come up like later that afternoon or even the next day before I can put the video online. Okay, so we have a chat feature on the side. You can ask questions. I'll be keeping my eye on the chat feature. So some things that I just want you guys to be aware of of what you need to do this week. So this is the first thing we're gonna go through is what you need to do this week. And I wanna show you Canvas and what I've put there and, and what um, you can find on Canvas. So, yeah, I'm sharing my web browser. Now. Oh man, technology is, is fun. Okay. Um, let me make sure I can still see the chat. Awesome. Okay. So, if you're on Canvas, this is what it should look like for you guys. This is the student view. So again, we're working right now on Chapter Six, but keep in mind that your next exam that you're taking next week is on chapters five and six. So each week you're going to go through, you're going to use the syllabus, you have an updated syllabus to tell you what that the topics are for that week. So you'll go through the topics on the PowerPoint. The other thing I put up here are some, um, the WebEx link, how to download WebEx. Hopefully if you're here right now, you have figured out how to download WebEx. That part is going well. If you need Wi-Fi, if you're right now doing this on your phone and you're using data, um, there are some resources to get free Wi-Fi for, I think it's 60 days. So that might be something you wanna look at. The other is how to get a free textbook. The last thing I put here on helpful documents is your online textbook resources. So that will bring you to this page. You'll need to create a login, I believe, but this is your, the textbook you've been using or theoretically that you've been using. I'm not going to kid myself and think that everyone's been reading along with the textbook, but they do have some good resources. So they've got quizzes for each chapter. They've got practice tests. They've got practice anatomy lab, which has some um, interesting tools. I think I put it over here. Oh no, that's just telling me I share my web browser. Okay. The one I want to draw your attention to is the one called interactive physiology. So with interactive physiology, you can look at bones, neuromuscular junction. This is what we've been working on, right? You can look and it will tell you what you need to know. It'll go through and have some animations that put some of these things that we've been talking about into motion. So especially if you're going back through the material as you're starting to study chapter six and you say, none of this makes any sense. I completely forget all this. Please go back and look at this interactive physiology part. Okay, um, and that would be helpful. Okay, so the other thing that we're doing this week, we're gonna go down every week to your Canvas activities section. Right now we're working on muscles. So the muscle worksheet, you have to work on that. There's a muscle quiz. The muscle quiz is ungraded, ungraded quiz. You have to complete it, but the score you get won't count for anything. Um, on muscle videos, I also loaded four videos that I think are useful. Watch them. These are not graded. I'm not going to check whether you watch them or not, but I think they're helpful um, in preparing for your exam and understanding the material. Okay. Then there's also this good bone and muscle page that I think is useful. It's visible body. Um, this used to just be like a museum exhibit but they have it now online. So you can go through and look at the different bones. Again, not graded, not graded. Just another resource because you're not gonna have wonderful me talking time, okay? 
What will be graded is your participation in the discussion board, either in things you found confusing or interesting, right? This would be like your sign-in sheet that we normally do, so you will ask a question there, or in muscle questions. So these are some questions that I would normally pose in lecture that you can take a time and answer one or two of them as well, okay? So what is graded, you need to participate in a discussion board by Friday. Um, we're also gonna go to the assignment page. I'll show you what else. So you've got upcoming assignments, your muscle worksheet, right? So if you click on muscle worksheet, you're gonna download this worksheet. You're gonna submit your assignment. That'll give you five points in your Canvas activity section. Okay, so you're gonna do the discussion board. You're going to do the muscle worksheet. You're gonna watch these videos. Next Monday is the only time you need to log in at your specific time. So at 9.05, this will be live. It's not available right now, but this part will be live. And it is uh, the multiple choice section for your, um, for your exam, okay? Multiple choice section. So it's got 45 multiple choice questions. You will have 35 minutes to answer them. They'll come up one at a time as a way of preventing group work. Again, you want to treat this like a normal exam. So you won't be using notes. You won't be using your book. I'm trusting you to just take it like you would a normal test. There will also be a short answer question section, um, which will pop up. It's not available right now. So you'll do the multiple choice section then you'll download the short answer page and then type those answers in and you'll submit that. That I'm going to ask you to submit through Canvas and it will go through like a plagiarism software to make sure you didn't copy and paste things from the internet. Um, again, this is like a normal exam. You're just taking it at home. Okay, so and this is what your Canvas looks like now. These are where things are. This is what we're working on this week. This week we're finishing muscles. So muscle worksheet, discussion board, practice quiz. That's what you should be focusing on. I gave you a lot of other resources if you're feeling like muscles are confusing. Okay. In the chat feature, if you have any questions at any point, um, please let me know. Someone is asking to annotate the shared con content. I don't think that that's going to work well, but if you have a question, go to the question page. Question, put it in the chat feature. We'll try that. Okay. I'm going to switch now to PowerPoint. Okay. So let us work on this. So this is where we had left off with our PowerPoint. Do slideshow. Type in our slide. Okay. The chat feature. Okay. So again, you want to chat. You can chat in the chat feature. I'm going to keep going through what we had been working on. Okay, so where we left off, we had talked about the types of muscle tissue that were involved. We zoomed in on a muscle tissue. We had talked about sarcomeres and how they're the contractile unit of the muscle. We drew and labeled a sarcomere. We then talked about how skeletal muscle contracts, right? And it gets input from a motor neuron. What happens at that motor neuron? The motor neuron is going to release acetylcholine. The acetylcholine, right, is going to bind to the sarcolemma, which is the special word we give for muscle plasma membrane. Bind to the sarcolemma. It's going to open up these channels. Sodium is going to rush in fast. Potassium will leave slow. This wave of changing charge is a depolarization. If it starts to move down our muscle, we call it an Action potential. This action potential is going to open up calcium stores from in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That calcium is going to go to our sarcomere. And the calcium allows the myosin head groups to grab on and bind to that actin. And they'll use ATP to pull the actin filaments to the midline, to the M line of the sarcomere. What they do is they slide. It's a contractile, a sliding filament. Okay. What this is going to do is it's going to contract the muscle. So that's what we spend a lot of time talking about. Um, if there are questions about that, please type them into your chat box 
or put them on the discussion board and the things you find confusing and I can go back over it. Um, I also posted some videos about it. So we're going to keep moving forward. This is weird. I apologize. We're, we're just going to keep going. Okay. So what we're going to be working on is we're going to define origin, insertion, prime mover. I'm going to move this like down here, I think. Um, no, I'll put it over here. Can I make it a different size? No, I can't. I apologize. Okay, let's just keep going. We're going to define origin, insertion, prime mover, antagonist, synergist, and fixator. Then we're going to demonstrate the different types of body movement. We're going to understand how our muscles work together to produce movements. And that's going to be this little chunk of information. So this is the five golden rules of skeletal muscle activity. So now that we understand how skeletal muscles contract, let's think about how those contractions produce movement, right? Because one of the major functions of our skeletal muscles is movement. So the five golden rules. One, with few exceptions, all skeletal muscles cross at least one joint. Few exceptions, all skeletal muscles cross at least one joint. Two, typically the bulk of the skeletal muscle lies proximal to the joint cross. So again, proximal means closer to the site of attachment. So if we think of our biceps, I've got the big biceps here, we think of our biceps as a stereotypical muscle. The joint the bicep is crossing is our elbow joint. This is the joint it's crossing. So it's going to have an origin up in the humerus and it's going to insert down in the radius. The majority of that muscle, the bulk of that muscle, lies proximal, closer to the site of attachment, than the joint it crosses. Our bicep is located proximal to our elbow, the majority of it, okay? All skeletal muscles have at least two attachments. Again, they've got one, at least one spot where they start and a spot where they end. Skeletal muscles can only pull, they never push. So because the contraction is only ever a shrinking, a sliding of those filaments, the only motion that the muscle itself can do is to pull in one direction. So how you get different movements is different locations of muscles will pull on those joints. During contraction, a skeletal muscle insertion is going to move towards the origin. So if we think of our bicep here, this is our insertion and this is our origin. When we move, we're taking that insertion and we're bringing it closer to the origin. We're decreasing that distance. The muscle is going to slide together. And the origin, again, is that less movable spot. Okay, so again, muscles attach at the origin and at the insertion. The origin is either immovable or less movable. And the insertion is going to move towards our origin. So again, we think of our bicep. We have an origin in the humerus that's not going to move, that's stable. And the insertion, the insertion is the part that moves around. The insertion is the part that moves around. Let's now talk about types of body movements. Now, I know I, for most people, I've turned your video off or you've turned your own video off. You don't, you can leave it off, but I recommend doing these movements in, in your home because in class, I would have made you stand up and do this. Just a forewarning. So types of movements. Flexion is when we're going to decrease the angle. So if we're going to flex our elbows, flex, your, flex at the elbow. We're taking the joint, if this is 180 degrees, and we're making the angle smaller. Flexion, it's now down to like 30 degrees, right? So everyone flex your arm. Can't see you, I'm assuming you're doing it. Flex your arm, awesome, okay? Flexion at the elbow joint. Extension is the opposite, it's when we increase the angle. So we're going to, if we're starting from our arm straight, we're gonna flex and extend, flex and extend. Hyperextension, we go beyond that 180 degrees. So flex, extend. You can't really hyperextend your elbow unless you are like a weird elbow jointed person. Again, you don't have to show me. In class, you probably would have, and it would have been gross. But we can do that with our shoulder joints. So flexion is we're bringing our arm forward at the shoulder joint. Extension, we bring it back to our side. And hyperextension, we move it behind us. Flexion extension. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
My computer is weird. Great. So flexion, extension, hyperextension. Someone has their volume, not silence. If you could silence it, that would be great. If I could find you, I will silence it for you. Let's see. Hello, everybody. Slide. Oh. Hold on. You could silence yourself. Make sure your microphone is off. Okay. Great. So this is again showing up the neck flexion. We're decreasing the angle. Extension, we're bringing it back to baseline. And hyperextension, we're taking it in the other direction. Flexion and extension all occur along this plane of the body. So with our arms, at our elbow joints, at our shoulder joints. It's in this plane, the sagittal plane of our body. Rotation is when we rotate the bones around a longitudinal axis, okay? So rotation, you're rotating your head, you're moving it along a longitudinal axis, a vertical axis. If you are taking your limbs and you're rotating them, we can talk about lateral versus medial rotation. Medial rotation is when we're gonna bring it to the midline, Lateral, we rotate it out. So you're rotating it in, rotating it out. You can do that at your shoulders. You can do it at the hips, right? Rotating in and out. Okay. Abduction with a B, abduction versus adduction with a D. These are often confused with each other, so try to keep it straight. So abduction, we're going to be moving the arm or the leg. We're moving the limb away from the midline. Abduction, it's going to move it away. And adduction, we bring it back to center. So everyone abduct your arms and adduct and abduct and adduct. Okay, abduction, adduction. The last one is circumduction. In circumduction, you're making a cone shape. So you're taking your limb and you're making a cone shape in the air as circumduction, not to be confused with rotation. Rotation, circumduction, abduction, adduction. Okay, everyone, I hope you are making fools of yourselves in your homes, moving your limbs in all sorts of ways. Let's talk about our feet. Okay, so dorsiflexion is when you flex your feet and plantar flexion is when you point, P, P, plantar flex, point. So everyone dorsiflex, plantar flex, dorsiflex, plantar flex. Okay, great. Movements. If you have a question at any time, please put it in the chat feature. If you have a question at any time, please put it in the chat feature. I don't see any questions. We're testing to annotate. I'm not going to allow annotations because it's going to go all over the screen, but if you have a question, please put it in the chat feature. Questions go here. I typed it up. You want to look for like the little talking bubble. Okay. The other movements of the feet are inversion versus eversion. So if you have your feet, if my hands are feet here. My hands are feet because I'm not wearing shoes because I'm in my house. Okay, so these are our feet. If we're going to evert our toes, that's where you bring your toes out. If anyone's done ballet before, if they took dance lessons as a kid, putting your feet into like first position, that's eversion. So you're bringing your toes out. And then bringing them back and pointing your toes into each other, that's inversion. So if you've ever been skiing before, to stop your skis, you make like a little pizza pie, you'd be inverting your toes. So if these are my feet again, eversion, I'm bringing my toes out, inversion, bringing them together. Eversion, inversion. Okay, great. Now we come to movement of the forearms. We have special words we use to talk about when we're moving our arms. So how I like to remember this, and this is very um, weird, but this works for me. So pronation is when the radius is gonna rotate over the ulna. So if you look at your arm, you look at your arm, the radius and ulna. The ulna is that more medial bone. The ulna is more medial one. The radius is that more lateral bone when you're in anatomical position. When you rotate 
your arm, when you turn your wrist, the bones go over each other. So when we are pronating our arms, we're flipping them so our palms are facing down. Pronating, palms are down, supination up. And how I remember this is I like to pretend in my hands, I'm holding like a little bit of soup, a little bowl of soup in my hands. When I'm supinating, my hands are up, I'm holding the soup. Supinating, holding the soup. Pronating, I'm pouring the soup out. Supinating, holding the soup. Pronating, pouring it out. Supinating, pronating. Supinating, pronating. Everyone do that in your house. Supinate, hold the soup. Your bones are parallel to each other. Pronate, you pour the soup out. Palms are facing down. Okay. Supination, again, is that classical anatomical position. Okay. Last, we come to movements of the hand. We have a special word for opposition of our thumbs. Opposition of our thumbs. This is what separates monkeys and humans from other mammals. We have opposable thumbs, which means we could do this. Opposition. Everyone move your hands like this. You're touching your finger to your thumbs. You are using opposition. Opposition, opposable thumbs, opposable thumbs. Okay, great. So, are there any questions people have about muscle movements? Any questions people have about muscle movements? Put it in the chat feature. Go on once. Go on twice. Okay. Keep moving on. What I want you guys to do, though, is take a minute or two at the end of this and practice all the movements while you say it out loud, like in your house. Move around. Abduct, adduct, flex, extend, all of that. And the discussion board today, or the discussion board for this week, is about what movements are required, what movements you're doing when you do complicated motions. So take a stab at that for your discussion points this week. See how um, these concepts come together. Okay. Muscles, again, can only pull. So how do we get such complicated movements if muscles can only pull in one direction? That's because muscles work together. So we term the major muscle involved with the movement the prime mover. The major muscle involved with the movement the prime mover. And the muscle that works against that is the antagonistic muscle. So if we're looking at flexing our arm, the bicep, the bicep is the prime mover of elbow flexion, decreasing the angle at the elbow, elbow flexion. The bicep is the prime mover of elbow flexion. And it is antagonized by our tricep. It's opposed by our tricep. So we have a prime mover, we have an antagonist. And then we can also have a synergist, which is an accessory muscle that's going to help with the movement. So we can have a synergist, a brachialis for elbow flexion that helps with the movement, but it doesn't do all the work. These things can also work to stabilize the joint. For example, they can help hold the origin still um, in certain movements. So we have a prime mover, an antagonist, synergist. Let's talk about how muscles cross, how muscles cross. So muscles that are involved with flexion cross anteriorly, anteriorly meaning to the front half. So if we look at our pectoralis major, if we look at our pectoralis major, they're going to cross in front of the shoulder joint. They're working on the shoulder joint. They're going to cross to the front of the shoulder joint. And when you flex at the shoulder joint, when you bring your arm forward, you're gonna feel that contraction. So when in doubt, try to put your hand on whatever muscle you think is contracting and see if you can feel it moving, if you can feel it contracting. So when you flex at your shoulder, if you put your hand at your pectoralis major, you should feel a contraction at the flexion point, okay? For those of you who like to pick up heavy objects and put them back down as a form of exercise, this part will come a little bit easier to you. You just want to think about what motions you do to increase the bulk at that muscle. So if you're working on your pecs, for example, <laughs> then you would be doing a lot of movements at the shoulder joint, right? Movements of the arm at the shoulder joint. So that will tell you what joint they're working on. Okay. If they cross posteriorly, they're going to be working on extension. So crossing 
anteriorly crossing to the front, flexion crossing to the back, extension. So if you think about what is involved with raising that arm back, bringing that arm back down to our side, that's going to be our back muscles, the latissimus dorsi specifically. So again, crossing anteriorly, flexion, posteriorly, extension. Okay. Things that cross to the lateral side, away from the midline, that's going to be for abduction, abduction. So your deltoid fibers, your deltoid is going to be here. It's on the lateral side of the bone it's moving, the humerus bone in this case. And it's going to be involved with abduction, moving away from the body. So if you put your hand on your deltoid and you lift your arm up, you should feel that contraction, abduction. Whereas the medial side, and the medial side closer to the midline is going to be involved with adduction. So the teres major, things involved with that rotator cuff, for example, cross on the midline side, the medial side of the humerus bone. And so they're going to be involved with bringing that back down to your body, the adduction part. Okay. So. Naming muscles. This is going to be the last thing we're going to talk about today, and then I will leave you again with a reminder of what you got to do this week. So we can name muscles for a variety of ways. So if you, as you start to memorize your muscles, as you look at that muscle worksheet, right? So I have it all filled out here, my version. Obviously, yours will be typed because you're submitting it. You want to think about why is that muscle called what it's called, and this will help you remember where it is and what it does. So it can be named for the direction the fibers go in. It can be named for the direction the fibers go in. It can be named for its relative size. For, for example, we've got certain muscles in a group that are the magnus, which are much bigger than the brevis, for example. It can be named for its location, the frontalis muscle, right, is right on the frontal bone, we call it the frontalis muscle. It can be named for the number of origins, your bicep bi meaning two, because it has two origins versus your tricep, tri meaning three, it's got three origins. It can be named for the location of the origin and the insertion, right? Your whatever bone it inserts onto. It can be named for the shape, shape of the muscle might give it some name and it can be named for the action like the adductor muscles are involved with the adduction of the leg so as you start to memorize muscles what i want you to do is think about why is that muscle called what it's called okay so muscles also have shapes to them if you remember when we talked about muscle fibers again fiber meaning cell the fascicle is the bundle of fibers, and the fascicles can have different shapes depending on what the muscle does. So we have some circular fascicles, right? The orbicularis oris is the muscles around our mouth, and these have a circular fascicle. They form a sphincter, which is an opening, and the circular fascicles allow them to squeeze, to close those openings. Anytime you have an opening, like your mouth or your eyes, you're going to use a circular fascicle around that opening and that way the squeezing the contracting of that will allow you to open or close the opening you can also have a convergent fascicle convergent fascicles like at your pectoralis major these have a single insertion so they might have a wide origin and a single insertion and what this does is that creates a fan shape that helps give a lot of strength because all of the force of those fascicles are going to converge on a single point. So it's going to create a large force. We can also have parallel or fusiform, so parallel, which is where the length of the muscle lines up with the long axis of a long bone. For example, your biceps are parallel and they're specifically a fusiform shape or a spindle shape. And this again is going to give some strength, but it's also going to allow for flexibility because you're bringing down muscles that are going to travel with the bone. You can have pennate shape, pennate shape, which are shorter fascicles that are attached obliquely to a central tendon. 
for example, your deltoid. Whenever you have fascicles, keep in mind that the more fascicles you can pack into a smaller area, the more power you're going to generate. Because again, power or strength comes from the number of fibers that are contracting at once. Power or strength or force of contraction comes from the number of fibers that are contracting at once. So if you have a pennate shape like your deltoid, for example, you're going to have lots of fascicles, lots of fibers in a small space because they're all coming at an angle to a central tendon. And that's going to give us a lot of force. You can have a bipennate, which is just two groups of fascicles coming together, like at your rectus femoris. Unipennate, one, one set of fascicles coming together. Okay, that's where we're going to leave today. We're going to pick up with gross anatomy on Wednesday as a reminder of what you need to do. If we go back to our share. Hold on. I am. This technology is extra fun. Okay, I'm going to share. Share browser again. Okay. So hold on. Share web browser. Okay. So what I want you guys to look at again at the Canvas site. We got chapter five. We got chapter six. We're working on chapter six. Okay. So I want you to look through the slides. I will post the WebEx video. You'll look through the video. You're working on your muscle worksheet, your muscle quiz, looking at some videos. You go under assignments, what you have coming up. Again, that muscle worksheet by Friday. Okay. Ungraded stuff, the discussion board. So I want you to take, I want you to participate in the discussion board, submit the muscle worksheet, submit the muscle quiz. The rest of the resources are ungraded. They're just for you, okay? The graded things you have coming up are that muscle worksheet and the discussion board. So again, the graded things, muscle worksheet, discussion board, um, that is, is gonna be your focus. Um, okay, let me unshare this for a second. Stop sharing. Going back here. Okay. Are there any questions people have today? Any questions? The other thing is, oh, what will help us complete the muscle worksheet? That's a good question. So if someone wants to know what will help us complete the muscle worksheet, your textbook. Theoretically, you're supposed to be reading your textbook like as you go along. That's been the plan this semester. I don't know if people have been doing that or not. Um, the muscle worksheet looks like this. If you print it out, I printed it and I didn't type it because I'm bad with computers. I hand wrote it. Um, it has the muscle, where the muscle is. You can give just a general location. Is it on the face? Is it on the arm? Is it on the leg? What is its origin? What's its insertion? And what is the action or the movement of that muscle? The internet can also help you if you don't bring your textbook home. And then some of the online resources I posted are going to have some of that information. The most important, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is on Canvas, I have put a whole section about labeling. So on Canvas, there's a whole section about labeling. I'm asking you about the location, right? And we're going to go through some of the labeling on Wednesday because you're going to be responsible for knowing where that muscle is. The main things I want you to know are where the muscle is and what it does. The origin and insertion is also helpful. But as a fun tidbit, if you see an asterisk in the column for the insertion, those are the ones that I will test you on. So I won't test you on every single origin and insertion. I will test you on the ones that I put an asterisk on because that means they're most important. Good question. If you look in the textbook, most of it is on pages 216 to 217. Yes, there's a whole chart in the textbook that I made the, <laughs> the worksheet from. So at the end of that chapter, now if you didn't bring 
your textbook home. There is an online textbook, again, on Canvas on resources. I have a link for that. Good question. Any other questions for this morning? Going once. Going twice. Okay. I'm going to end class. Um, I'm available via email, via WebEx. I have my office phone linked up to my cell phone, so if you call my office number, I will still get those calls if you need to talk about anything. We're going to figure this out, guys. I expect the first week or two to be a learning curve, um, but we're going to get through it together. So let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will see you guys on Wednesday.